Good afternoon. It is September 3rd, 2023, and it is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. <clears throat> in the readings today, we have St. Paul giving us an interesting challenge. He asks us to offer our bodies as a spiritual sacrifice, holy and unblemished, which is an interesting statement that takes a fair bit of unpackaging. What is St. Paul actually getting at? And part of it begins with our baptism. In baptism, each of us is given a white garment and told to bring that garment unstained into the kingdom of heaven. Seems like a simple idea, but the white garment symbolizes one, our adoption into God's family, but it also symbolizes our call, call to holiness and to present ourselves constantly and at the end of time to God with that white garment unstained. No matter whether we are a priest, a religious, a single, or married, we all begin with that call to holiness, that white garment. And then through our journey of life, we make choices, we make decisions. Some people will choose to remain single. Some people will choose to get married. Some people will choose to enter the religious life. And some will choose to become priests. In each and every one of those, it's like putting on a new garment. Married life is probably the one that most of us can identify with or understand. We come from families. And in the marriage, the responsibility of the husband is the holiness of the wife. The responsibility of the wife is the holiness of the husband and how they help each other discover a greater level of holiness. Parents have the responsibility of teaching holiness to their children. In baptism, they accept the responsibility. Will you raise this child in the faith? Will you give this child a relationship with Jesus Christ? What exactly does that look like? Well, for different families, it looks different ways. But there's a few things that we always should take to consideration. One, as Catholics, where's the crucifix in your house? If you want to discover or discuss love, there's the ultimate sacrifice. There's the ultimate sacrifice of love. Jesus loves us so much that he suffered and died for us. Well, in our understanding of love, is there an element of sacrifice? Is there an element of surrender? Is that part of what love is for us? We talk about the four foundation stones of marriage, faith, hope, love, forgiveness. Those four foundation stones set the tone for holiness of life. We build up each other's faith. We build up each other's hope. We build up each other's love. And we build up each other's ability to forgive. Married life becomes the synthesis for all of us because that's where most of us start off with in a family. But then there's the choice of religious life or the priesthood. There too, putting on the garment. Now, in married life, we talk about crosses, okay? Dealing with the things of life. Well, the same thing in the single life, religious life, priesthood. They share one thing in a common. Now, one thing we have to remember is we all start off as single and then we may choose to move into a different direction. But the single life, the priesthood, religious life, share one thing in common, and that's the gift of chastity. The single life calls us to a focus of living a chaste life, which in and of itself could be problematic, might not be problematic. For priests and religious, we tend to look at them. And I know for myself, since becoming a priest, there's a lot of people go, oh, Father, how can you live without sex? How can you possibly live without having a partner? Well, some days it's a trial. Some days it's difficult. And some days it's like, okay, whatever. Then there's the other people say, well, Father, how can you, how can you not want children? Well, there's something in that. Children are beautiful. Children are wonderful. They're a gift from God. But at the same time, I don't have any children of my own, but I have a whole raft of children. I've got the family of God, and these are my children. And one of the things I've discovered as a priest is that when there are children in the parish that are struggling going through difficulties, there's families going through difficulties, you're brought into that. And they're my children, my spiritual children. And nine times out of ten, there's absolutely nothing I can do except I can always pray. And that's the first and foremost thing that we should be doing. It's where holiness of life comes from. And I pray for their holiness of life. The religious, it's the same thing. 
we make certain choices. And one of the choices that we make, religious and priests, is we accept celibacy for the good of the kingdom. To live that celibate life for the good of the kingdom, for all of the people. And witness to the people that this is something that can be done. But as St. Paul reminds us, most are going to get married. And so be it. Some will choose the single life. And St. Paul gives us a reference for that. Because the single person has the ability to put God as their primary focus. Where the married person has to put their spouse, then their family, and then God into focus. The primary responsibility of a marriage is each other. And they have to work on that. And, as I said before, all of these, whether it's single, married, religious, or priesthood, there are crosses. The cross of celibacy. The cross of living a chaste life. A married life, one of the greatest crosses, I think, is losing a spouse. In our parish, we have quite a few widows and a number of widowers. But there's also the loss through divorce, separation. And that cross you have to carry. You can't take it away. It's a fact of life. Your husband dies, your wife dies. It wasn't your plan. You know, we sometimes think we're going to live forever. We know better, but we don't necessarily plan for it. Divorce. How many times do people get surprised by a divorce? I, I can't take it anymore. I'm out of here. And, of course, the crosses that are brought about by that. Now we have to figure out a new way of living. We have to new, find out a new way of life. And the crosses that are laid upon the children that oftentimes are overlooked or ignored because no divorce leaves anybody unscathed. I know in my own life there's been a number of people that I've known who got divorced and all of a sudden the tensions in the relationships can become somewhat very, very frustrating. You know, well, he doesn't want you to talk to her and she doesn't want you to talk to him. And all of a sudden, people who were your friends, now there's a separation. The crosses we carry. Oftentimes, the crosses that we carry are more relational than they are anything else. Or they're more about relationships than anything else. The question is, how do we deal with them? And of course, Jesus shows us how. With faith, with hope, with love. And with a lot of forgiveness. Doesn't matter which state of life, single, married, religious, priesthood, that first garment, the white garment of baptism, the call to holiness, is always there. And to live that life of holiness, that call to holiness, faith, hope, love, and forgiveness are necessary for our salvation. It is September 3rd, 2023. It is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. May God continue to watch over you, protect you, guard you all the days of your life.